Okay, so let's end our first chapter here. Um, the first chapter in uh, Algebra 2, we have 7 point, R1.7, uh, solving absolute value equations and inequalities. Hey, maybe I'll give you a call sometime. Your number still 911? Oh, righty then. Absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero. So what you have to keep in mind is absolute value, since we're talking about a distance, it's always going to be a positive answer. So whenever we're talking about the absolute value, you need to keep in mind that wherever we're doing this, it is going to be a positive answer. Um, it could also be zero. Um, so the absolute value of zero, we would end up with zero. And those bars on the outside are absolute value bars. So when we're doing a problem, keep in mind when you see those straight bars, those are in parentheses, those are absolute values. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're doing these problems, that that signifies what an absolute value is. Solving an absolute value equation. Okay, so um, here's what we have. We have just like a linear equation that we talked about when we were solving linear equations, except now you have the actual um, one side of the equal sign in absolute values. Um, and you also need to keep in mind whenever you're solving an absolute value equation that C is positive. Um, think about it like this. Everything inside this needs to be positive. We said absolute values need to be positive. So how in the world can you get a positive answer there is the point we're getting at if the absolute value needs to be positive. So to solve this, we need to set up two different equations. You set up exactly what you have, except without the absolute value signs. So I have literally everything. I just took out the absolute value signs. And then I set up literally the same exact item. Just now I make the one negative. So notice how it's the same exact thing with a positive answer and the same exact thing with a negative Hello? answer. Hello? Anybody home? Hey, so we'll take a look at an easy example here to get started. We have the absolute value of x minus 9, and that equals 5. Okay. So the point I'm getting at here is what we want to do is we want to write down exactly what we have without the absolute value. There it is. Then I also want to write down exactly what I have, but I want to make that 5 a negative. Okay. All you need to do is solve both of those equations. So to solve each of those, I need to get x by itself. To get x by itself, all I'm going to have to do is add 9 to both sides. So Because this is a negative 9, I add 9 to both sides. So by doing that, um, the 9's cross out, I get x equals 14. And the 9's cross out, I get x equals 4. Check your answers out and see if they work. I'm telling you right now, if you plugged in a 14, what's 14 minus 9? 5. So the absolute value of 5 is 5. If we plug in a 4, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Okay, because remember, um, it's always, whatever you have in here, it is always going to give you a positive answer. So notice if we put both of those in the problem, they do work. Solving absolute value inequalities. Okay. Um, so if you have an inequality set up, which we already went over how to solve those, and keep in mind, C can't be negative, right? It's a non-negative number. So it can be zero, it can be a positive number, but it can't be a negative number. Okay. Um, there's the first way to solve these. And if it's a less than, you set it up like an and equation. And notice how I have this set up. When it's a less than, or less than or equal to, I kind of sandwich the middle in between the positive and the negative of the answer. Okay, but now if I have a greater than, and once again C is non-negative, so what that means is zero or a positive number. If I have a greater than sign here, we have to rewrite it as two. So the top one here, we sandwich it. When it's less than, we sandwich it. When it's greater than, Okay, so when I'm talking about greater than, you write down exactly what you have. Okay, so we write down exactly what we have. And then the next one, you flip the sign, which I flipped it right here, and you make it negative. Okay, so you set up two separate ones when you have it as a greater than or greater than or equal to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you 
you telling me you built a time machine? Alright. The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time we have a car, why not X plus five. Mile? The absolute value of that is less than or equal to ten. Okay. Since that's less than, I can rewrite this as a sandwich. Okay. And I put the X plus five in the middle. I have the ten, the positive ten on one side, and the negative ten on the other. So to solve this problem, I need to do the same thing to every single side. So to get x by itself here, I would subtract 5 on both sides, which means I need to subtract 5 on all sides. So by doing that, 10 minus 5 is 5. Um, on this side, negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15. And in the middle, I have an x because the 5's cancel out. So when I go to graph that, since there's a bar underneath, a line underneath, that means it's a solid dot at 15, or at negative 15, and at 5. Alright, and since it's a sandwich problem, I draw the line in between. We're sending you back to the future! So, now this one, the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 13. Okay, so here's what we got. 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 13. Since it's greater than, that means it's not a sandwich problem, so I need to write down exactly what I have, which is what I do. Then I write down exactly what I have, except I flip the sign so it's less than or equal to, and I make this negative. So those are the two items that I need to solve. Remember, write down exactly what you have, and then you write down what you have, but you flip it and you make it negative. So when I solve this, I would solve it by adding 5 to both sides because I'm trying to get the x by itself. The 5's cancel out, so I have 3x is greater than or equal to 18. Um, to solve this, I would divide both sides by 3 because it's 3 times x, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide both sides by 3 and I get x is greater than or equal to 6. Over here, I would add 5 because I'm trying to get rid of that 5 um, and get x by itself. So by doing that, I get 3x is less than or equal to negative 8. And I'll divide both sides by 3 because it's 3 times x, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So um, I end up with x is less than or equal to negative 8 over 3, which is roughly negative 2.666. So I find them, and there's negative 2.666 roughly. And it's like an arrow facing to the left, right? the arrow facing to the left, so I'm going to shade everything to the left. I put the 6 down, and that means I'm going to shade everything to the right, because it's like an arrow with everything to the right, and that is to the left. And there is your... I'm very important. Uh, I have many leather-bound books. A cereal manufacturer has a tolerance of 0.75 ounces for a box of cereal. That is supposed to weigh 20 ounces. Right and solve an absolute value and equality that describes the acceptable weight for a 20-pound box. Okay, so we need to take the actual weight, which we do not know. So I'm going to call that x. So we don't know what the actual weight is, and we're going to subtract the average weight um, of 20 from it. And since the weight is not negative, that goes in the absolute value. So that's why I have what the actual weight is minus 20 because the box of cereal is supposed to weigh 20, so maybe the box of cereal is 26, so we subtract 20. Maybe it is 20, so it's right in the button, so we subtract 20. The point I'm getting at is whatever the actual thing is, minus 20 is what we're uh, aiming for here. So uh, to solve this, it has to be less than or equal to 0.75, so we sandwich that because it's less than or equal to. So to solve this problem, all we have to do is add 20 to both sides, 20s cancel out, and we end up with uh, the actual box of cereal must be in between 19.25 and 20.75. And when we come back here, we'll try to finish up quick on um, 1.7 on solving absolute value equations and inequalities.